This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, this is Alex Bennett, and this is The Ramble, and we go until midnight tonight in New York City. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah, it's Larry Bubbles Brown. Hello, Larry. Hey, Alex. Remember when there was a TV show that was a failure called Hello, Larry? That was McLean Stevenson. That was McLean Stevenson. That was the show he did after... He Mash. left Mash for that, right? Yeah, he did leave Mash. He actually left Mash. He left another it. good career move. <laughs> Went to do a show called Hello, Larry, that lasted what thirteen episodes, and that was it. If that, I'm trying to. Re- I don't know if I ever saw it. I don't know what the premise of the show was, but mm. it was Larry. I'm trying to eat a pill at the same time talking to you. Uh, actually, a vitamin. Hmm. Hmm. Um, um, uh, yeah, he, uh, I don't know what the show was about. It was about Larry saying hello. I don't know. <laughs> or people saying hello he, to he Larry. Was, he was a funny guy. I remember he was on talk shows. I liked him. Yeah, he, but he, that killed his career fast. He killed it, yeah. I mean, he then appeared in some other things here and there, but nothing of the success that he had with MASH or getting that deal with, I think it was NBC, uh, Talk about that would be a good uh, book about people <laughs> make bad career decisions like leaving shows became huge. Uh, there was a comic who uh, is not dead now, but he in the first uh, year of The Simpsons he was two of the major voices and he left that. Oh boy! Yeah, well, you you know The Simpsons. This is interesting. There was a guy. If you look at the credits, it says uh, created by. So and so, so and so, and Sam Simon. Sam Simon, yes. And Sam Simon was so disliked by his partners that he was kicked off the show in the second year. But he kept making uh, for the rest of his career this incredible amount of money for creating the Simpsons. Oh, he was uh, f- unbelievably wealthy. Yeah, and he did good things with his money too, if I remember correctly. He died finally. Uh, but he, uh, uh, and I bet all the people on The Simpsons were happy with that only because they didn't have to keep paying him all that money. Uh, but he, his, you know, he made a fortune off that show. Just, and he, all he lasted was like two or three episodes. Because he was an original creator, so he gets yeah. money forever on those. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. In fact, you, he, I think he was a producer on the show, and they had to keep the producer credit. You know, so... Huh. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, he gave a lot of money to uh, animals, and uh, yes, 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 yes. Died of uh, colon cancer in his, I think, in his fifties. Really? Said that he noticed the symptoms but just ignored them. What? What were? Oh, well, I don't know what the symptoms are. I was look. I always look up symptoms on uh, on the web. Yeah, then you think you've got it. Th- <laughs> thank God you don't have fast internet. <laughs> Because like I'm looking up lately, I'm looking at bronchi, uh, what do you call it, uh, esophageal cancer. Oh, that's horrible. Yeah. I think I have esophageal cancer. That's what I believe. I honestly, I've convinced myself of that, even though I have none of the symptoms. That's what killed our old friend Fred Reese last year. Really? Mm-hmm. Wow. I didn't know Fred Reese had died. Oh yeah, he uh, had. Uh uh, 20, 30 years ago, he had testicular cancer. Then he got esophageal cancer. And, uh, wow. That, uh, that He talked about it a lot on uh, Facebook, online, I think. And it just sounded like it was horrible. Yeah, well, I, uh, you know, I don't have GERD, which is the main cause of esophageal cancer. That's uh, gastrointestinal. You know, we have uh, acid reflux a lot. Get all that acid up there. I, yeah. I don't have that, you know. Never have. And when I did, I took some stuff for it that made it go away, you know. So that can't be what it is. And then I have none of the symptoms of esophageal cancer except for maybe one 
and it's the one you know that you always aim in on oh i i woke woke up last night in the middle of the night and i had a cough i coughed okay and then went back to sleep well it's everybody every now and then coughs when they sleep right mm-hmm. you know but me i think i've got esophageal cancer you know <laughs> You know, I, I'm at that age where you sit down and you say, what is it's going to get me, you know? What's finally going to be the the crowning glory on my life, you know? So, yeah, the cascade of horror as you get older. I, t- tomorrow I have a, a, a my, well, every nine month, and then it'll be a yearly appointment with the urologist to take my blood test to see how the PSA is and to stick his finger up my ass and to make sure everything's good up there. And, uh, you know, uh, and I always worry about it. I always worry about it, that the cancer is going to come back or something, you know. But I, the doctor who did my seed said to me, he says, you've spent enough time not having a high PSA that it never will go up, you know. So, mm-hmm. so uh, but once a year, I worry about it, right? Yeah, yeah, I gotta sweat that stuff out. It's just uh, waiting. It's annoying. I'm at that age where you go, what is it that's going to get me? And I even ask every doctor ever I ever had, like my um, uh, the guy who uh, did my seeds. I said, is this what's going to kill me? And he looked back at me and went, no, (laughs) no, (laughs) you know, like I was. What kind of idiot are you? I don't know. I'm that's the kind of idiot I am. I'm sorry. I have another friend who's just like that. His name is Larry Bubbles Brown. <laughs> so, Larry, last time we talked, everybody was just dying to know how your hernia My operation. <laughs> hernia update, yes. Yeah, you're is. sounding just like, you know, having had a hernia operation, which I hear is is kind of a little little off-putting, all right? Mm-hmm. I, you know, it takes a couple of weeks to really get back to normal with that. Um, uh, so I expected you to just sound uh, a lot less I did too today. yeah 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 and look at you you're just terrific to what do you attribute the fact that your hernia operation went so well uh, <laughs> that it didn't happen <laughs> <laughs> again yes this is uh, number 3 i think this is not this is not my fault yeah so but this is now this is he goes to kaiser which is at one point you referred to as doctor assisted doctor su- assisted suicide yeah yes. yeah uh, one of, I, one think, of you, I think they have a building named after Kavorki and the Kaiser. <laughs> anyway, so so um, uh, so our schedule. I was scheduled two weeks ago to have a surgery done, and they get an email that said, uh, "Yeah, it's January seventeenth. You will get a call from us telling you what time to arrive." If you don't get a call from us by the day before, call this number. So I hadn't heard from them, so the day before I call that number, not only it doesn't, it never goes to voicemail. I couldn't leave a voicemail or anything. I couldn't get a hold of anybody. Tried it all day. And if you tried it all day, you kept, if you dialed it wrong once, you couldn't dial it wrong twice. No, it's the right number, cause, uh, yeah. but just uh, I can't believe they didn't have something to leave a voicemail. And then it was Martin Luther King Day, so maybe nobody was there. But So the next morning I'm waiting, and uh, I get a call like 8 o'clock, and they said, where are you? And I said, I didn't get a call from you. I didn't know what time to come in. And they said, oh, you're supposed to be here now, but now it's too late, so we'll have to reschedule you. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, did they apologize? Well, after I, they, I said, yeah, I said, I never got a call from you guys, and I couldn't leave a number. They said, oh, okay, that's, a, that's, a, that's on us. We're sorry. But it, we're sorry? Yeah. But doesn't give you much faith in your hospital, does it? No. No. You know, you're worried enough about this thing, and you don't have faith, you know, that these guys are doing what they should be doing. Yeah, now it's really the past two days really hurting. So, so did they reschedule? Not yet. <laughs> Are they supposed to call you back to reschedule? They're supposed to call me back. Yes, you know how that works. Oh boy, no oh, boy. Shame on you, uh, uh, Kaiser. You remember years ago you got in trouble uh, for that line on my show. Oh yeah, it was. Uh, 
they sponsored the Trapper Report, and it was uh, it's a lot. I still have the angry memo from, but uh, what was the line? Uh, the Kaiser it said Kaiser, we're different from the ground up, and I tagged it with because that's where all of our patients are. Oh Jesus. <laughs> Uh, so I got this memo from. Was uh, it on that that you got the Met memo? Metro traffic that said pull all Kaiser spots immediately. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, it, they were not happy with that. <laughs> I thought it was because you said it was doctor assisted suicide. No, no, it was the yeah, it was the traffic thing, and c c we're different from the ground up. Yeah, that's, that's where, where all so our patients oh, are. Oh Jesus! <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, that's God. That was the <laughs> shit. I miss those days. Yeah, it was strange because he didn't actually work for Live 105. You got a paycheck from what Metro Traffic was it? From Metro, yeah. There's this company called Metro Traffic. I don't know if they're around anymore. And they they literally supplied traffic to radio stations. And if you had somebody like Bubbles who was actually in the studio with you, they paid him not yeah. the station because they had the advertising in that segment and they made the money off the advertising apparently not from Kaiser uh, <laughs> you know. oh they were they were so livid about that did you get a call or anything or did they just write I you? think they I think they called Pat the uh, GM but they didn't call me so. yeah, what's with this guy Larry bubbles they must have hated <laughs> they must have hated you over at Metro <laughs> traffic his traffic reports, actually, people look forward more to his traffic reports than my show. Um, yeah, we had sound effects, and we just make fun of cities. and uh, Yeah, yeah, and somebody's, uh, uh, like, uh, 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 stalled on the Bay Bridge, and your line was? Park it, whore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it. boy. That became a big catchphrase, yeah, for Park and Hoard. Yeah, you have Park and Hoard t-shirts, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, I sold a few Park and Hoard t-shirts, yeah. Do you have any of them left? I don't, no. They'd be a collector's item now. <laughs> I guess they'd be collector's items. I don't know. I had, I had a whole bunch of t-shirts, you know, for every show I do and things like that. So I, somewhere I have still a pile of them. Um, really? Yeah. That'd be. Yeah. You could sell those. Yeah. Um, we had like the Bobcat Goes to Hollywood T-shirt, and we had you know we do we did all kinds of T-shirts. And Bobcat we didn't, Goes to we, Hollywood was July of '85 at the Circle Star. Oh boy, jeez, Almighty! I know you were there, weren't you? I was not at that show, but that was I didn't do your first show till uh, April of '86. But uh, D didn't you come I, to the show at the Circle Star though? No, no, mm. that. Uh, Although I've been told that was, All people right. have told me that's the greatest comedy show they've ever seen, that one. Really? It was, uh, it was Bob Cat, Dana Carvey, Warren Thomas, Bob Rubin. I think that was it. Yeah, it was an am we, I heard it was just amazing. We could only afford four people. <laughs> <laughs> and I never, I never even got into that. Uh, that was such a cool play that had, that had the revolving stage, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you had to know how to play that stage. You know, it was it's called the Circle Star. That's why it's called the Circle Star. I saw Frank Sinatra there in, in later years. He uh, and Sammy Davis were one of the original investors of that theater. Oh, the Circle Star? Yeah. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. Oh boy. Yeah. Um, uh, Frank's. I saw Frank Sinatra there. Oh God, in his last years. I mean, it was. I'd wait uh, all my life. I'd waited to see Frank Sinatra. I mean, my father played with Frank Sinatra, wow. uh, like at the Calneva Lodge and uh, uh, some places. When he come to a concert in the Bay Area, my father played with the, the orchestra and those. And in spite of the fact that he, like I saw, I was with him in uh, Tahoe when the Rat Pack pretty much was playing up there, and uh, I never saw it. You know. It's not like he could get tickets to let me in because it was a very small room anyway, you know, uh, the state line room. But uh, what happened was is that I never saw Frank Sinatra until his opening act, the comedian uh, Tom, uh, 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 Tom Driesen. Tom Driesen, yeah. 
I was remembering the name Tom, and I remember the last name started with a D, and I was trying to come up with it, but I can leave it to you. I'm going to carry you around as my mem- <laughs> as my memory, okay? I'm like Siri. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Uh, who, who was the opening act for Frank Sinatra? Anyway, Tom Dreesen, he did my show one morning, and he said, why don't you come on out? I'll, I'll leave you a couple of tickets, and then I'll take you backstage and introduce you to, to, to Frank. And I went, that sounds cool. So I go to the Circle Star Theater, and uh, my seats are like third row. You can't say center because there is no center in that theater. Uh, Third row. And uh, he then comes and gets me, and he says, "Uh, I would like to take you back to meet Frank. And he said, but I can't because Jilly just died today, and he doesn't want to talk to anybody. Oh. And Jilly was like one of his best friends. He was a, what was a restaurateur? In New York City, perhaps mob associated, you know. <laughs> Frank uh, was always on the fringe of the mob. Wasn't yeah, he? <laughs> yeah. Well, he, listen, Frank had every reason to like the mob because when he had that bad period for a couple, only a couple of years, uh, when Columbia had fired him and MGM had fired him and he had nothing, they would still hire him. They brought him in to work their clubs to keep him eating. Okay, as it were. And so he always felt a fond affection for those people because they saved his career. And, and that's, that's a good reason. Pure loyalty. Yeah, the mob was great for entertainers. Well, I mean, they also owned most of the venues. Yeah. Uh, the Copacabana here in New York was mob-owned. You knew that anybody who played there was managed by the mob or somebody, like you know, or the mob liked them or whatever. I mean, uh, the Copa played, Martin Lewis played there, and uh, Sinatra played there. Well, anyway, uh, he, he, but anyway, uh, Jilly was like his, uh, one of his best friends, and he died that day, and Frank just was very despondent. But he got up and he did a show, and the problem was, there was nothing worse than seeing Frank Sinatra, especially if you were a fan, in his latter years. Because he was terrible. I mean, he couldn't hit the notes right, you know, he didn't have the chops left. Uh, and at one point, his son, his son, Frank Jr., was, you know, conducting the orchestra. And really? Yeah. Wow. And uh, Frank uh, was doing one of his songs, you know, from uh, 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 with a cigarette because it was one of those you know, saloon songs that he sings, one of those love lost songs, maybe make it one for my baby and one more for the road, you know, he's smoking a cigarette. I don't think he, by that time, I don't think he was smoking, he was just pretending to smoke it. And finally, at the end of the song, he throws the um, cigarette, you know, dramatically to the ground and then stomps on it. Uh, But he misses the cigarette. And the stage at the Circle Star was a rug. And as he goes into his next song, smoke starts <laughs> coming up from the from the cigarette. And uh, uh, Frank Jr. is leaning over while conducting the orchestra going, Dad, the stage is on fire. <laughs> and Frank looks down and sees what's happening. So he then takes his foot and puts the whole thing out with it. With his song. <laughs> True show business. He put out a fire while he was singing. So so what age would he have been then? God. I don't know. I, I looked it up. I looked up that concert, and I think maybe he was... God, I'm thinking... What, what, hold on a second. Uh, Echo? He was, he was born in 1915. Echo? How old was Frank Sinatra when he died? Frank Sinatra died at 82 years old 82 in years old. in Los Angeles, California. December 12th. His cause of death was bladder December cancer 12. and heart and kidney disease. Bladder cancer, 82 years old. So, my age. Well, uh, yeah, uh, younger than me. So he was but, he, but when he was, wait, when you saw him perform, I he was bet probably he was, like I 10 bet years he, younger? Well, let's see here. He died. Well, hold on a second. Echo, when did Frank Sinatra die? 98. Frank Sinatra died on May 14, 1998, at the age of 82 years. Okay. Frank Sinatra died on May 14, 1998, at the age of 82 years. Frank Sinatra died on May 14, 1998, at the age of 82 years. Okay. Frank Sinatra died
Okay, 19, May, May 14th, 1998. So uh, I would say maybe it was uh, 1998. And I, I, I wasn't, I was still, this is my last year, I think, at, there, maybe I would may have been out of Live 105 by then, so I'd have to say maybe it was three years earlier. Okay. So. You know, the problem is that he married, uh, you know, he married. Uh, Barbara Marks. Bar Barbara Marks, who was... Uh, Har Harpo's ex-wife. No, no, not Harpo's. Zeppo, I think. Zeppo, okay. Zeppo's ex-wife. and Or it might have even been Gummo's. I can't remember. <laughs> People don't remember Gummo. Gummo. The, the least known Marx brother. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, there is another one, Aleppo, but that's a joke. It's a war joke. Um, <laughs> uh, no, but uh, uh, Gummo, Gummo only worked the the, uh, the the Broadway shows, you know, uh, and um, so that was it for for for, for uh, Gummo. Uh, he left the act and became an agent, very successful agent, as a matter. Um, and I think he may have even managed the Marx Brothers, if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, so you had, I think maybe it was, she was Zeppo's wife. And she kept him working till he died. She just wanted the money coming in. Wow. You know? And usually, you know, a good wife would go, hey, you know, you've had many good years, Frank. Why don't you just retire and we'll go and we'll tour the world and whatever. No, she made him keep working. And uh, everybody hated her. Everybody absolutely hated her. Mm. You know, they loved they loved Nancy and they loved uh, who was it? Well, Mia Farrow. <laughs> God, he married Mia Farrow. You know. So, do you think he knew his voice was shot? I don't know. You know, I listened to his records in later years, and I go, whoa. You know, didn't he know that he didn't have it anymore? I mean, I have a, a, a recording of him in Milan uh, singing April in Paris and that beginning thing which is da 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 He just completely is off key. Just completely. It's, mm. And it's horrible. And, you know, since it's a recording of it, that he must have heard it. You know, it was never released, but he, he must have heard it. Because somebody gave me all the all the recordings Frank Sinatra ever made, including the stuff that was like black, you know, black market and whatever, of of concerts in like Milan and uh, Paris and so on. And he just, he, as the years go on, I can almost tell Frank Sinatra what year it was he recorded a song by how bad he's singing. Wow. Yeah. So they're like athletes; they actually run out physically. Well, they know, you know, if you're not. Well, I mean, he was working, so he was using the pipes, but he didn't take good care of them, that to begin with. You know, over the years, he drank, he smoked, you know. That's not a good way of taking care of your voice. On the other hand, you had Tony Bennett, who even to his last concert was okay because he never, he treated his instrument like it was a, a precious violin, you know. And, and so that's where, where Frank's ability waned. Also, I think he probably just started getting a little bit of a tin ear, you know, and it didn't just was it, he didn't have the chops anymore. Yeah. And when you don't have that instrument anymore, quit, you know, say, hey, you know, I had a good run. I got some wonderful recordings I made that will live forever. You know, it's time to go. But no, he just kept going and he kept going because Barbara kept pushing him out there. That's yeah. bad. Yeah. More money, more money, more money. You know, so he. Yeah, it's kind of like what happened to Elvis at the end. I mean, the Colonel was shoving him out there doing gigs he wasn't capable of doing anymore. Yeah. The Colonel, yeah, getting fifty percent. <laughs> is that is that really true that he got fifty? That's what I read. Yeah, that he was because he was a manager. Agents are by law restricted to 10 percent a manager can get whatever he negotiates so he was a manager yeah so his manager so he took he settled on 50 percent and he's the one that made him make all those dopey movies yeah he kind of i thought he kind of ruined elvis he made all those crappy movies he kept elvis from performing in england which would have been amazing and he never elvis never went to europe 
Never no. played, never played Europe, and he. And that was because the colonel was from I think the Netherlands, and I think he would left Europe under very shady circumstance. I don't think he w was allowed to go back. Maybe that was it, but he kept him from going. Well, to, so uh, you don't go. You send Elvis, and you yeah. you can manage him from afar. Hey, listen, we're running out of time here. You know. <laughs> yeah, that sounds uh, ominous. Any gigs you want to plug? I got nothing. Uh, Valentine's Day, the Throckmorton Theater, yes. Valentine's Day at the Throckmorton Theater. Oh, okay. All right. Not That's far from the Tamil Pius Motel. <laughs> the, the, just a stone's throw from the Tamil Pius Hotel. <laughs> hey, thanks, Bubs. We'll talk thanks, to you Alex. next week, okay? Okay. Larry Bubbles Brown, ladies and gentlemen, playing absolutely nowhere. <laughs> This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. Yeah, bubbles, bubbles, bubbles. Everybody loves bubbles. How can you not love bubbles, right? Right. Anyway, hello, everybody. I've been spending the last half hour trying to fix this equipment. These lights I have here go on, and they go off, and they go on, and they go off. Sometimes you push the button and they don't go on or off. And then you got to figure out, you got to re, redo them. They're kind of like on Wi Fi. And so you have to, uh, 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 what do you call it? Uh, pair it to the Wi Fi by turning it on and off. And, and I just, I spent a half hour figuring this out while Bubbles was playing. So I'm exhausted already. Anyway. Well, there's nobody tonight except for Josh is waiting. That's it. Well, if nobody else besides Josh calls, that's enough for me, folks, because Josh is okay. Uh, let me see here. Let me bring Josh in here if we can. Okay. You're it, Josh. That's it, huh? Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Here comes Charlie Wallace. Okay. Let's see if he's in the dark or not tonight. Let's... My Probably. God, his electricity is still out in, uh, where are you exactly? Uh, you're in, uh, um, which part of Texas are you in? I forget now. Well, me? Yeah, you. I'm in Austin. In Austin. Uh, Northwest Austin. Yeah. 150,000 of us, no electricity for over almost three days now. Really? Yep. I mean, that's ridiculous. When do they say they're going to get it Richest on? Richest country in the world. They said it would be on by 6, by five, six o'clock today. Well, maybe it's 930. What, so what, was the, what was the failure this time? Did you did you have an ice storm again? Or? Yeah, we had a, an ice storm on Wednesday. In fact, Wednesday and Thursday. It rained and ice below freezing. And mm -hmm. so much ice collected on electrical wires that they broke. Tree branches broke with the ice on them and brought down more wires. And it, I mean, that's got it fixed yet. I mean, it's still ridiculous because yeah. I mean, this happens in Ohio and Michigan and Wisconsin and Pennsylvania and Indiana and Illinois. I mean, like all the time. <laughs> Listen, we you had know? we had we had some pretty big outages here in New York on a couple of occasions. Once while I was actually here uh and uh w once when i was here and then another time when i came back uh there was a, an outage as well in both cases those outages were never longer this is for all of new york right new york city yep. were more than i think three days maybe two and a half three days tops and it was that they got the electricity back on pretty fast, but it went in, a, in an inner circle, kind of in a, in a, you know what I'm talking about? Kind of in a spiral. And I was the last apartment to get turned on. But, I mean, it, it, was, it, was, uh, it was a lot better than that, you know? So, I mean, this I This is the second time this happened. This happened two years ago. Yeah, well, well you know something? I'll bet you something. I'll bet you any amount of money you got that Greg Abbott's uh, electric wheelchair is working. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure the governor's mansion has plenty of electricity. Now, I forget, where is the governor's? It's in Austin, isn't it? It's in Austin, yeah, but I'm sure he's got his own generator. Why don't you go over there and warm your hands by his house? <laughs> I'll go camp out. By the governor's mansion. 
Jeez, almighty. And this is because, I, is this blamed on the fact that Abbott uh, said, hey, we don't, uh, we don't need no stinking rotten grid, national grid? No, supposedly this doesn't have to do with the grid this time. This is just because of the ice storm and the power. But what? But we had ice storms and power go out in Chicago. It never out more than 24 hours. Yeah. It would have them all fixed, you know, plenty of time. Right, right, exactly. So I don't understand why it's taking them, why they can't fix this in over three days. <sighs> Superman to the rescue! <laughs> The only so, thing that works is your so, cell phone. So I, I, I oh no, my light. Oh, my light. <laughs> I posted on Charlie's page. We need to do a GoFundMe. So next winter, when this happens, that GoFundMe pays for a plane ticket. So when power goes out, he leaves right away to California. <laughs> when you hear an ice storm is coming, I'll give money to that. To that, I'll, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I have a spare room. Just get That's a generator right. so you can th stick your thumb up and, uh, and everybody else. Yeah. Yeah, he lives in an apartment, though. Yeah, I live in an apartment oh. complex. They do not allow generators. Ah. Isn't that I'll terrible? Back your truck and lock it up. <laughs> what, yeah. what really they should have done, you know, I mean, uh, those people over at Peloton have been in trouble lately. And I think they would have done really well if they had somehow put a generator on the peloton on the bicycle so yeah. when this happens all you do is you get on your peloton you're getting some exercise and your lights go on you're right? a genius you're a genius huh you are because, a genius. Alex. well i thought for years all all that energy was going to waste when people went to gyms and worked out and used uh, stationary bikes and cities were going electricity is costing too much well just hook up to those you know that's how Coldplay runs their concerts. <laughs> Seriously? Wow. Yeah, they have they have they have little areas down in this in the audience and they say, We need fifteen people to come down and ride the bikes and then they got this other area where people jump up and down in it and it powers up the stuff on the stage. Come on, that doesn't really happen, does it? It does. <laughs> oh, the last wow. show I was at Levi's, it was it they do that. Really? And whether it really works or not, you know, it might be just a gimmick, but they say it does. Hmm. They're green, they're green, uh, whatever, what do they call it? It was something they called it. No, that was Green Day. Uh, oh, that was, yeah, that was Green Day. <laughs> right. Uh, yes, Alan. Green Day just blow it up. <laughs> so, so when we were kids, we had bicycles that had a little generator. Yeah. It, sat it would light up a wheel. light. Yeah. It would it light generated up. the power for the headlight. Yeah. 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 So I mean, you yeah, know, that makes a Pissed lot of sense. you off going uphill because it always drag you down. Oh God, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you always had to be pedaling for the lights to work. Yes, yes. You know, they didn't store up some kind of energy in no. the battery no, and right. kept going. You know, maybe today they do. I don't know. You know, but then again, how are they, how do they generate those lights today? I guess just batteries, huh? Yeah. Today oh, they got sure, the, yeah. you know the bikes, the the e bikes now the whole. The whole frame, the down tube on the right. frame is full of a battery. And it's got LEDs, which don't use much power, so. Yeah. yeah. That's what this is. This is three days with this on, and it's still going bright. And what, and what do you got, batteries in there, or is it? Is it... Yeah, it's got four AA batteries. Because there are some lights that are just crank lights, right? And you can. Yeah, we used to have a demo light in, in the physics department when I worked there. Yeah. That you could crank up and light they up. They got the. Ones with a radio on them, we use them in the ham club. So yeah. Vernon probably knows about them. Well, Josh, aren't you happy you don't live in Texas? For, I mean, any number of reasons, but that being any number of reasons, one of yeah. them. I would never live in Texas. I lived in Texas. I got to tell you, I know this is not going to settle well, but you know how I didn't like Florida? You remember how I hated Florida? Yeah. How I absolutely wished Florida would fall into the ocean? Okay. On the other hand, I loved Houston. I loved living in Houston, especially back then when they had the uh, uh, they had the beer lounges and things like that, you know. And it was like really still kind of cowboy time, you know. Yeah, I really kind of liked it. Uh, and Texas is a uh, great. You place. just like the open carry. You carried a gun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it was it, it was good, and I, you know, I left. And uh, and Jack Bishop stayed, so you know, 
Uh, you know, we could. I knew. I knew because we didn't have him on earlier this week. He would call eventually. Oh man! Oh, oh Jesus! It goes the night. Oh, Phil's called. Jesus Christ! Okay. Well, <laughs> I, I. Yeah. You notice how happy everybody is, Phil? Oh God, Phil called. Okay, I didn't want to say anything. I didn't want to say much tonight, anyways. So it's okay. Well, you didn't want to say much tonight. Yeah. Hi, Phil. Hey, so... Hey, Phil, they're shooting up the, the synagogues. Where were you? What? Where, where Everybody froze. Oh, uh, come on, let's hope they come back. Uh, I did, oh. I don't, I'm Balboa Avenue. Okay. And, Every, hold on uh, a second. Everybody was frozen for a second on this end. Uh, I don't know oh. why. Uh, it says your internet connection is unavailable. Well, it is now. Okay, so... Shut so, up, Zoom. Go ahead. Yeah. We, um, we make fun of Phil uh, Phil defending the synagogue, and he, they actually, some guy went in there and started shooting and just walked out. He wasn't there. No. Which, uh, which synagogue? I found out about it tonight. It actually happened <laughs> on Wednesday. Right. Which synagogue uh, was it? It wasn't your synagogue. No. It was a Chabad um, out on 36th and Balboa, hmm. which is what? The sunset, right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it was mainly Russian speakers. And this guy did the same thing in a store, uh, you know, like a grocery store, I think, what, the day before, Alan? And yeah. uh, it was a starter pistol. Yeah. Uh, uh, so you Nobody know, got up. They all just sort of looked at him doing it. And then he said, okay, bye-bye, and he left. Oh, they, had one guy, there. <laughs> there, there, yeah. they had one guy get up and walk towards them. Yeah, I guess if I guess if the gun was real, he was going to be a bullet magnet and save everybody else. But... Sponge, bullet sponge. Well, no, but here's the thing. Sponge, here's the thing. Magnet, what kind of bullet... stupid idiot are you to go in with a starter pistol? Because people don't know the difference between a real gun and a starter pistol, and they'll yeah, just shoot you dead. What happened where where we were protecting the guy? Be laying there dead. Or what did yeah, he? Yeah, would have shot him, right? What did they expect if they came in to catch him with the gun? He would hit. He would fire the gun and then run like crazy. Well, you know. uh, I don't know. It's interesting because that lady sitting in the in the chair was just knitting away or whatever the hell she was doing, and she just looked up and just kept on knitting. Well, you know, these are these are Russians, and you know they're they're accustomed to this stuff. I mean, you know, every day, Ukraine, Russia. What's the difference? You know, that they wasn't a lady. Them. That was Phil with a wig on. <laughs> oh, that's what it was. Undercover Phil. Yeah. 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 No wonder he didn't get up and move. Yeah, nobody dove under the table. Nobody seemed to even be threatened. No, no, no. That, that's what Alan would have done. <laughs> well, so, so in other words, in other words, this was a non-event, basically. Uh, well, it turned out to be that, but you know, uh, they don't know enough yet to know whether it was a hate crime or just a crazy person, and uh, this was an open door. Yeah, that would be both. Well, I would yeah. say that in most cases they're crazy people anyway, wouldn't you? Yeah. I mean, I often like people who say, you know, well, the guy shot, went in, shot a gun, killed a bunch of people. Uh, he was crazy. <laughs> he, oh, he, uh, or they try to plead that he wasn't crazy. Well, he wait a minute. He knew what he was doing. No. Yeah, the, scary, the scary thing with this is this guy probably, if somebody was armed in there, would have been shot, maybe even killed. Yeah. And he had a starter pistol. Yeah. yeah, that taqueria in uh, Houston a couple of weeks ago, mm -hmm. the guy walks in uh, with a uh, airsoft gun, uh, robs a bunch of patrons, mm -hmm. and some guy sitting there waits for him to pass and then shot him four times. Mm -hmm. Guy falls on the floor, and he shoots him four more times, and then he gets up, and he shoots him one more time, uh, the coupe de gras. And, uh, you know, some people are hailing this as, oh, isn't that fantastic? But, uh, you know, uh, it, once the fight is over, it's over. I mean, you know, if, he, if it took four times to get him down on the ground, uh, that it's time to stop. Wait a minute, you stop pushing him down to the ground? No, not stop according, shooting him on the ground. Oh, not but, according to the Memphis Police Department. <laughs> oh, yeah, used, right. No. Oh, oh, well, the Memphis the Police Department, they were practicing. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Always they, a joke. They Memphis. finally found there was a there was a plumber that was on the other side of town fixing a toilet that was white, and they finally found somebody that they could fire 
So, you know, they said, oh, we, we got a finally got a white guy that was involved with this Memphis thing. You know, they, they were they were looking all over the place. Well, but how do you feel about that whole thing? Uh, these guys were animals and uh, they are going to go to prison for a long time. What about the cops? That's what I was talking about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I was I yeah. was arguing the other night and I can bring it up again here. That I what I'm bothered by though is I don't think they should have released the tapes. I, I think that should have been saved for the trial. I I think doing it at this point is, is allowing the press to try the case on the air. I think that what the chief of police there did saved riots all over the country by being transparent, yeah. by uh, firing these guys, indicting them within days. Uh, no, this. Yeah, this, but, but do you believe? Do you believe? Uh, do you really think that we might have had riots? Because let me say this. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Let, let me say this. I think we had more of a chance of riots with releasing the tapes because people would be incensed by what they saw. Here's yeah, what I'm thinking. Also, Here's what I'm thinking. They they had already been somewhat satisfied by the fact that they literally charged five of these policemen with a crime, yeah. uh, and so that. It is enough real satisfaction and you just say we're not releasing the tapes because we want to save those for court so they can be seen at that time that well, we don't want we don't want people public. going on the I mean you go on to any of these stations and they were like it was Terry they were tearing them apart like it was some kind yeah. of well, uh, I, I don't know if Alan or Josh would know because they're uh, they belong to the public whether uh, they didn't have a choice but to release them. Oh, they don't have a, they have a choice. They yeah, have a choice. Definitely have a choice. Uh, I don't know, you know. Yeah, no, they definitely have a choice. They How don't do have to release them. Impartial and they, uh, jury. What? How do you impanel exactly. an impartial jury when that's out before the public? It's just anybody yeah. that doesn't go on GabNet. What? No, no. You know what it is? It, 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 it has to be people who haven't been tainted by the video, and that's very hard to find. And if you do find them, they don't pay attention to anything anyway and might make a bad ju jury uh, person. So yeah. why not wait until the trial to show the jury these tapes? How do you feel about that, Josh? I mean, you know, I mean... Uh, yeah, there's... There's no law uh, that I'm aware of that uh, requires them to release them, um, especially if they're considered evidence in a in a potential investigation, which these obviously are. You know, the police are never obligated to release evidence to the general public while the investigation is going on. That I'm aware of, and maybe in some small cases or something, but you know, obviously it has to be introduced at the trial, which is public knowledge. But at the time that they put it out, um, you know, yeah, I would agree that it, it certainly sets up for a difficult uh, jury selection. Um, I'm sure that if this stuff were to go to a, a trial, and I kind of doubt that it would, but, you know, if it did, that they would be looking for a change of venue. Whether or not they get it, I don't know. But, you know, no, but I'm even, sure that's even, the first even, thing yeah. any defense attorney would would ask for. but you could do a change of venue on this and and who in the country hasn't seen these tapes right it, it right that, it, it wouldn't matter i mean um as a general practice uh, in my opinion i don't think the release of these uh is as necessary as the public makes them out to be or some people believe i mean i think that Oh, I think I think actually uh, the only reason the public needed to see them was for their own morbid curiosity. The pu yeah. uh, public, I mean, you know, nothing changed because the public got to see them. Okay, no, yeah. the public didn't need to see them. But let's think back about the George Floyd trial. That everyone saw those as well, and they found a way to pick a jury. Lawyers are There good was at a that. difference. There was a difference there, though, Kevin, in that those tapes belonged to a in private individual. Either yeah. way, yeah. they were still broadcast, and they still yeah. picked a but, jury, but, and they still yeah. got a trial. Oh, yeah, still... you're, you're right about that. Alex, yeah. uh, you're familiar with the Freedom of Infor Information Act. Is that something that Freedom could information have gotten Act, these tapes that, out to the public? This has nothing to do with the Freedom of Information well, Act. Well, oh. I was just a, a victim of the Freedom of Information Act. 
uh, I have a, a concealed weapons permit, and uh, the uh, there was a newspaper in the Bay Area that last week asked the sheriff uh, who issued them in my in our county uh, to give the names and at least cities that uh, CCW carriers live in. He wouldn't give the address. There was a there was a dump of information that Rob Bonta, who is the uh, AG for California. Uh, he dumped CCW information, social security numbers, and a whole bunch of other stuff, home addresses, uh, employment, date of birth. Uh, so uh, so he, he did that statewide. But the county, uh, Bay Area News Group, mm-hmm. uh, I think you're familiar with them. Uh, they, they made a, a Freedom of Information Act request and the sheriff had to comply Mm -hmm. so they sent me a letter the other day telling me hey uh your name and the city you live in will be uh uh given right but that's all they can give them they couldn't give them the social security number your address and everything else there's uh, certain things that freedom of information that's because the sheriff refused to give that but freedom of information act has has to do there's certain things they can do and certain things they can't hold on a second josh freedom of information act Explain it exactly. I know that I have the right to go ask them for my FBI file, for instance, mm-hmm. under the Freedom of Information Act. Yeah, I don't know it's backwards and forwards or anything, but I mean, it, it just pertains to public record, government public record that um, after a certain period of time or under certain circumstances that anyone in the general public is entitled to have access to usually um you know, but some I, I don't even know entitled might be too strong a word because there are certain things that they can deny um i know a lot of historians that work with freedom of information act requests all the time because they're writing books about you know like the cold war for example there are a lot of authors who write books about the cold war Mm-hmm. who would really like access to certain documents that maybe the CIA held mm-hmm. or the DOD or the NSA. And sometimes they get them and, and sometimes they don't. Um, but it, it really doesn't filter down to, you know, something like this that's still even in a pretrial state, for example. I mean, the general public at this point doesn't really have a right to these tapes or an entitlement to these tapes. Um you know, the well, prosecutorial team still has discretion here. Now, if the trial were over and these guys were in jail, for example, then I think you cross the bridge into a FOIA request territory. Um, would have already been done at the trial anyway. But well, once, once, it, once, it, once, it, once, it, once it's admitted right. in a court case, it then becomes public record. Correct. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, you'd probably have your access anyway, but you know, let's say that, for example, for some reason they closed the trial to the public and to the press, and it was only the participants for some, you know, whatever, okay? Mm-hmm. And after the fact, you know, now they have to put them out, and if they say they won't, then almost certainly five minutes later, someone files a FOIA request, it goes to you know the government entity that takes care of it, and it goes through the process, and it would come out mm-hmm. that way. That would never happen in this case, but I'm just saying that's how. But it's still used to get you know it's used to get documents that aren't easily available, you know, like you know at the library, for example. You know, I mean, you know, yeah. it's not a phone book, but that's what I'm saying. If you're writing a a research paper or a book or something on, you know, the 1950s, 1960s Cold War, Mm -hmm. or something like that, and you come across a document that's referenced or something like that, and and you say, I I want to see the, I need to see the whole documents, you know, you can't go to the library and get it or anything like that. So you, you file a request with the government, um, you know, via a certain website and all that, I think. And I haven't actually personally done one, but I've heard a lot of people talk about it. And then, you know, they decide whether or not you can get it. I mean, there are certain uh, there are certain pieces of evidence from the Kennedy assassination, which are still under lock and key. Am I not wrong about that? They're yeah, in Mar-a-Lago. There's yeah. still a lot, as far as I know. And they put 
they put more out every couple of years. Yeah, but they um, they made a big deal about the fact that they were not going to release them at the time of the Kennedy assassination. Oh, right, right. Yeah, I think originally they had like a 50-year deal. Um, I so think, I think what it was is that they couldn't release them until all the major families were gone. Yeah, most, the, that's the general. 50 years is a general time period yeah. that a lot of stuff, you know, yeah. goes for, which is, you know, which is kind of how we still are starting to get like a lot more uh, – you know, Vietnam era record. And it's and, funny, you know, and, I've you know, lived long like enough to pass that 50 year cusp, as it were. You yeah. know, and in, mo in most cases, when you're filling out forms like you are, Phil, it's it's told on those documents that they've become public record. Oh, yeah. I, I, and, you know, and, I got no problem with it. I just happened yeah. to. Uh, because I used to fill out it. forms for the EPA when I was running my warehouse. There was a lot of forms that I had to fill out. And all of a sudden, I would Google my name, and there there I was all over the web yeah. on EPA forms and, and risk management plan forms. I go, what the hell? And yeah. it was because I filled out government forms, and they were public record, and anybody can find my name on that stuff. And, you know, that was well, part of my job. Isn't this isn't the first time it's happened to me yeah and uh it won't be the last but it's uh uh yeah it's a little bit no. of invasion you know you, somebody mentioned here i think maybe it was you phil that the reason why they released the tapes was so that they could prevent riots from happening well, and, it, and wait a minute it, let me it, finish come yeah. on I, let me finish what i'm saying uh, okay, okay you don't know what i was yeah, gonna you, do you, are you a mind reader do you know what i was gonna say i i was answering your question it was me what? Oh, that it was you. Okay, right. fine. Um, now I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, you were saying that I said it was because they released the oh, tapes oh, and reduced and, riots. And, and I don't think that was the reason at all. I think they just wanted to make the Memphis Police Department look good. I mean, Memphis yeah. uh, City Fathers look good and uh, because uh, nothing was being served by releasing those tapes at all. And so far as rioting is concerned, you know, people riot in their own hometown when their team wins the Super Bowl, you know? I mean, people sometimes will riot for anything, and the trouble was that in advance of the release of these tapes, we had every major news operation predicting how there were going to be riots and yeah. pretty much cause, well, it causing them if there were going to be any. The end result so, wait a minute. of so who releasing was somebody, of the tape somebody was saying and the something. actions of the Memphis Police Department mm -hmm. was that riots were quelled. There, there weren't riots. Did you were you going to say something, Vernon? No, oh, that was who was Charlie? It? I think Charlie. Yeah, I was just Are agreeing you? with you that, that that that's why they released it. Yeah. What was to prevent the rioting? Yeah, but to I make the uh, police but, department but, uh, look good. Yeah, but make don't the police don't, department look good. Yeah, yeah. but but I'm don't sorry, you think? Don't you? Well, it makes the police department look bad, actually. But uh, but don't you think <clears> that <throat> the the fact that these people had been indicted. Uh, for the crime uh, was enough to keep the, 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 the demonstrations down. I don't know that not releasing the film, saying we're not going to release the tapes because we don't want to sully the, uh, the, uh, the case we have in court. Sure. We want to present all our material then so that they don't have any reason to get out of this. I think the public well, would have accepted that. I think the public thinks that you're hiding something if you didn't release it. Living in a city where Breonna Taylor was killed, yeah, and the police department covered it all up mm -hmm. and made up shit in order to get the warrant that they executed on her apartment, right. which was the wrong place to look for the guy they were looking for. Right. Okay, we had riots in the street, but partially it was because the way the police department tried to cover everything up. Right, I was saying. Right, but but so, would you say that, that not releasing these tapes? Uh, would be covering it up or or saying that the reason we're not releasing them is we don't want to sully our case that we have in court by showing them now. No, I agree with Alex. The general public I agree with, doesn't care about that. I agree with Alex. The fact that they fired those police officers in a timely manner and the prosecutor said that they were going to bring charges against them, to me, that was enough. Yeah. I, I think that the... If they had done that tree, here, then we wouldn't have had riots in the streets. The, the country is is unified in the horror that happened and the and the uh, wrongdoing of those police officers 
and by showing the tapes and taking the other actions that were taken, I think it was transparent. Okay, but and what, what I'm about to say is, uh, is not in any way supposed to be taken that I'm defending these cops, which I'm not. But let's, let's for a moment realize, and something I realized a long time ago, that just because you saw those tapes doesn't mean you know exactly what went on. That's uh, because <clears throat> to begin with, all that you see is what is in the frame at the time. Not no, what's you, outside. You see, Listen, you let see, me finish. Uh, the light no, 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 no. Adam, Those Adam, were some. Adam. Then you see another. Yeah. You see another version of it. But all of them are different visual versions of it, which really the public isn't capable of piecing together. So if they piece it together, it's going to be what it's like a like a like a Rorschach test. It'll be what they want to see. You know? I think that light pole camera uh, really. Put uh, you know the kibosh on. But you see, here uh, we are talking about it now, and shouldn't this be done in court? I, yeah. I don't mm -hmm. think they show the exact beginning of that, Phil. I don't think that they show. There's one thing that they're saying that he was just in there, left hand turn. Or there's another one where he sort of drove crazy and erratic, and then all of a sudden he went into the left hand turn lane with a signal on. So I mean, I I don't I haven't mm -hmm. seen that part of it. Why did he pull him over? Phil, do you know that this started with a traffic stop? That's what they said. Yeah, so that, that's what I'm saying. Oh, we don't have to see like, evidence like that shows it. <laughs> like they're saying, it, all we see is what the cameras have shown us. Right. right. The body cam evidence shows the and, traffic stop. Mm -hmm. And if you watch, the, the what I watched was CNN, right, is they got those. There's one of those cameras that that thing is black for a while, and you hear a lot of stuff going on. He so one of, those, one, one of those cops turned it off or he didn't turn it off but he put he put it on the floor on the ground oh, again it, it, here it we are wait a minute hold on phil the camera here dropped. we are here we are rock oh yes here we <laughs> are now tearing apart that videotape and discussing it and this is not the place to do it the court of law is the place to do it and we wouldn't be doing it i mean we're legitimate in doing it only that we saw the tapes you know yes i agree thank you vernon i and like I said, oh, sorry, go ahead, Alan. Uh, so, so with this, uh, with these, with these body cams, different agencies have different policies. Some of them activate when you turn the emergency equipment on, lights and siren. Some of them, the officer activates when he wants to, and some of them are on from the time they get on shift to the time they end, including their bathroom breaks and stuff. But mm -hmm. you know. Now, but where, that where, one that costs forty nine dollars. But where's the camera? Where's the camera that clicks on when they pull people over? Uh, well, we uh, it's called an axon. And the sheriff department. I was just at uh, a dinner that they had, uh, and the Contra Costa Sheriff's Department spent a million dollars on these new cameras, and it stores things in the cloud. Uh, they, if you draw your weapon out, uh, it activates the camera. If you uh, are on a traffic Where, where's stop. Where's the rear view mirror one? Have uh, we seen that? Yeah, they, yeah, they, they've they have got some, that some too. cars have them. You know what's kind of interesting? This is, this is uh, okay, okay, yeah, body camera. Yeah, yeah. What's interesting is that this is all a modern affectation. Uh, when I was a kid, you know, it's, it, it, we, you never had video of this sort of thing because you or didn't have the color you, pictures. You didn't have the cameras to do it with, and then we got some cameras, like with uh, with jo <laughs> with uh, what's his name uh, down in L.A. when he got beat. Rodney, Rodney, King, Rodney, Rodney King got yeah, that, and that was somebody who was shooting with their video camera out the window. So all of a sudden, that was the first time we really got to see these kind of abuses. And then as years have gone on. We have everybody has everybody has a video camera now. They're carrying it in their pocket at all times, and so there are no secrets anymore. And then you've got the technology that puts these things on cops. It t starts when they pull out their gun, and on and on and on. We didn't have any of this at one time, and I don't know now that we have it. It necessarily is something that has to be seen by the entire public, except when the trial happens, and then. You want to report what goes on in the trial. Well, you know, I do some high-risk stuff uh, in these Chabad's in, in a 
pretty high risk area. Of well, burden. the high risk is you're carrying a gun, but go ahead. Yeah, really. Yeah. And uh, I wear this this body camera, uh, and uh, you know I might be there six, seven, eight hours. I have two batteries, and I just record the whole time. And if anything happens, uh, I've got documentation. And, yeah. You know, I think it's and I think it's a good thing. And what brand is it? Bob Love. Listen, oh, yeah. it's, it's, not a, it's not a professional Axion, is it? No, a I pay Axis. for this. Axis. I, you know, the, the Contra Costa County Sheriff spent a million dollars. I spent 149 Thank you very much. Yeah, but uh, it, admit it, the part of the reason that you're wearing it is to protect yourself from any Absolutely. kind of legal action. That's Absolutely. Right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. You know, if I'm, in a, wearing them. if I'm in a position where I have to shoot somebody, I want to make sure that I've documented the, the justification. Before you know it, every car sold in this country will have a front and rear recording camera on them. Yep. Well, That's you, good. Well, you know, in, in, in Russia, almost every car Easy. does because what Absolutely. happens what Boy. happens in Russia is there's a whole scheme where people will like plow into you and then say you hit them and then sue you. <laughs> So the been reason everybody, the truck drivers for years. Yeah. Yep. Every the reason everybody has these in their cars in Russia is because it's so prominent that they want to make sure that you see everything that's happening. Uh, so that if somebody tries to pull this off, you can just say, Here, I got you know, I got video on it. I bought one for my wife and daughter for Christmas. Makes that's great that. YouTubes. For, well, they uh, I I used to use them all the time on the uh, on the first T V show we did. Remember when we did from that T V yeah. show? See, what I would do is they have these uh, YouTube videos of the Russian car cams. And so I would just pretend like I was driving and use the video of the, uh, of the car cam. And I'm, you know, people are lunging over things and going out of the right, the lane they should be in and so on. But the point I'm making is, is that it is the over videoization of our time. I, I once did an interview with uh, Dan Rather and in that interview, I said to him, you realize that we are getting to the point where every second of every day, uh, almost everywhere on the face of the earth, somebody is videotaping what's going on. I said, we're going to have an extemporaneous record of just about everything if you want to find there are, it. There are places and cities where they have cameras that you can look at on the web. And it's, yeah. let's say you want to look at Manila. You know, because uh, oh, that's uh, been around. That's been around for like I know, 30 but, years or now. New York City or or something like that. And and you just get on, you look at it. I uh, I have a friend that's been that around, but that's been around Eagles. for thirty years, Phil. It's not. I, yeah, I, I, so in fact, somebody you've been I think, around I think for eighty. Was, Vernon, <laughs> did you send me the email the uh, the item where you said, oh, you know, there were there were eagle cams. Yes. Um, yeah. Well, I remember the Eagle Cam. The Eagle Cam had millions of views, and all you were doing was sitting there waiting for the for the uh, eaglets to hatch. Yeah. You know. Over the mountain. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, what about the big balloon that the China has created? Oh, now this thing, this thing, stop with it already, okay? <laughs> Biden doesn't want to <laughs> shoot it down. <laughs> why should? It, why do anything with? What is it? You know. Hey, this big balloon has been going over the country. We don't know where it's going. They had it was a, a birthday right party. Oh, there we go. Found <laughs> a picture right there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, all I'm hearing today, I'm hearing the. Uh, I, I think I, Blanken, Blanken um, was supposed to go to yeah. China and canceled his tri China trip because of the huge balloon. And I'm going, is he a moron or what? Yeah. You know, are to begin like with, China can, it, can direct uh, how this thing flies. No, but it's flying it's, in the wind current. That's all it is. Yeah, a it's a it's a spy and balloon. It's well, I'm sorry, it's not exactly secret. You and, know? The quality, so, and the quality of China stuff, do you believe is Chinese? It's not <laughs> North Korean. <laughs> that's the last place I'd buy a balloon that's going to travel from here across the world. Yeah, but I mean, oh. so, so what? Big deal. You know, it's not a spy balloon because you can see where it is. So, you know, I mean, come on. Spies are secretive. It's, it's ridiculous. It's, yeah, why it's so shoot ridiculous. it down, Phil? Why shoot it down? Yeah. Uh, because it's brief, It's broadcasting TikTok videos um, <laughs> of no, girls no, in their no, backyards. No, but you didn't give us an act. You said that they should shoot it down. And no, he I asked, said Biden said that yeah. he didn't want to shoot it down. 
Yeah, he didn't want to shoot it. It's going to go. <laughs> you know, they, he said that the debris field would be too large. What debris it's, field? It's over Montana. What? It's rubber. It's all over Montana. It's rubber. Do it over New Jersey or something. You won't even know. With a couple of little antennas on it. So? Um, the whole it was and actually an experiment the by Elon Musk. What were you, yeah. what did, what did you say? Was that you, Charlie? Yeah, I said the whole balloon would explode into millions of pieces and go all over the place. That's the problem. Yeah. But that's so debris. debris mean, mean, and so everybody would be a condom for everybody, right? Well, it'd be a piece of rubber for everybody anyway. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, what what's the danger in it? You know? <laughs> it's an it's filled with helium, there. I guess. And plus, if you just don't do anything, it's going to be out over the Atlantic within a day or two. It's 60,000 feet up. 60 uh, more feet is, um, they said too more high. More plastic in the ocean. Yeah, we need that. Yeah. I don't think it, I don't think it's 60. I think it's a little less than that. I think other, well, otherwise it wouldn't, it wouldn't be able to hold air in it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like I, think it was Aaron report. I think it's the like five miles over the Atlantic in another day. Yeah. 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 But I mean, I, I, they started out the news with this tonight. This was the big story tonight on the news. A big giant balloon. Wait till it goes over Miami. And, and I'm, I'm starting to think, hey, I wonder what they're going to do when they have the Macy's Day Parade. They're going to really go crazy. Did you, know? did you see the other side of the balloon? It said no. happy birthday. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, Is that a Volterran report? Yeah. Then you know that crap you told me about, area. Volterran, Alex? Yes, Volterran. Well, it's great for your arthritis, ladies and gentlemen. Well, tonight... Uh, uh, my rolfer, who hurt, who listens to this show, got Volterran because I have a problem with my knee, and so he lathered it up on the knee, and uh, I oh, have this. Oh, really? To say, you leave you slathering some stuff all yeah, over you? I, I have yeah. this to say: he could have put ivory soap on my knee, and it would have felt the same. That stuff does nothing. It, oh, Zero. Work, it works. It worked beautifully on my knee. Yeah, placebo. No. Ah, Listen, ah. you know what it is? It's actually uh, ibuprofen in a cream. Yeah. Florida. Yeah. Florida. yeah. Can you smoke it? <laughs> you know. Uh, uh, I, I, they, he, he put plenty on uh, the my calf and ankle. I, I it calf wasn't your and, knee. It was knee. your weenie. My, my calf and <laughs> knee. And he could have used butter, and it would have had the same effect. Really? Zero. Well, yeah. it happened. It worked on my knee. That, that's why I originally used it. I had a. So, so, Phil, I know that you don't realize how this stuff works. I had a torn meniscus. That's what I used it. That's on. what I have. That's right. what I used it on. Yeah. You can't have a torn meniscus in your penis, Phil. Well, if you get it out of your mouth, you'd find out it's on my is, knee. Is penis on your <laughs> list at all, uh, uh, Brian? Uh, it ought to be. No. No. Uh, okay, would you add Phil's penis to that list? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's really small. Yeah. Alan 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 has a one track mind. I yeah. use a little pen. Oh Phil, I was telling them last <laughs> night I I got my uh got my PSA back. Oh I think I listened. You were undetectable. Undetectable again? This is like yeah, three, just like your ratings. Three three <laughs> <laughs> Three or four times now, undetectable. So that's I fabulous. Feel, you know, I feel I'm, left I'm out, though, Alex. What? Uh, Alex? Why? I feel left out. Why? Oh yeah. Just, What's your? Oh wait, we I talking... forgot. Yeah, you had yeah. it too. Yeah. You were talking about Phil. And you were talking about Tony. Nobody mentioned. I Vernon. forgot. Yeah. But I forgot. Vernon, you didn't get uh, cancer, and you had it before the show uh, uh, went on the air. Uh, so what, what do you, you weren't your cancer wasn't caused oh, no, by this no. show. How, how insensitive can you be, Phil? Well, I we <laughs> Tony and I figured that everybody who got cancer who who's on this show got it from the show. But Vernon mine was got a it before the show. Condition. Huh? But mine was a pre-existing condition. Okay, so you're not <laughs> covered. <laughs> maybe maybe he's pet, patient A. Well, anyway, how many how many years are you since your treatment? 12. For 12? And are you still undetectable? My, my, PS, my PSA last year, I'm getting ready to do the physical this month, but my PSA when I did my physical last year was 0. 0.4. 
Oh, okay. Right. Well, that's fine. It's still, you know. What was your treatment? Burn? Was it ever undetectable at all? No, there, there, there was always something, but uh, yeah. uh, my my doctor, my primary care physician, was really on top of it when he and he and I think he just started doing the PSA during physicals as I got older, mm -hmm. and he he was a little alarmed when it got to be five point two. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And but he did, but he did, he wasn't overly alarmed until three years later. We do a physical, Ooh. and it's nine points. Oh, well, yeah. uh, that's that. Vernon, yeah. what what <clears throat> procedure did you have to eradicate the cancer? I went through uh, five days a week, nine weeks of pinpoint radiation. All right. So and mine yeah. mine was five of the stereotatic, which is higher. Dose, like five of them, and then the seeds. Mine was quadraphonic. Yeah, but we had the I, seeds. You just, you just got I the prostate. Yours was just removed. Just removed. Yeah. yeah. You know, he, he he said to me, he said they he did the thing with the finger, uh, which is he. It's very nice. He gives uh, he gives uh, uh, little chocolates to me after he's through. <laughs> Alan uh, likes it with the hand. Uh, and and he he goes up there and he goes, well, it seems like it should be. I said, what? He says. It's flat and almost non-existent. Could because, he feel the seeds? I don't know. No, he says he can't feel them because he doesn't. They don't really feel the prostate. They feel the skin above the prostate. Uh, par paradium okay. or something. Yeah. Or? It, well, yeah. It, no. That that's the area. That's in your heart. Phil. That's that's that, that's, heart. that's the the taint is the perineum. There, there's some sort of <laughs> tissue it's, between uh, what. There's some sort of tissue. I thought it started it's with It's called the taint. taint. Technically. <laughs> taint, taint penis, taint ass. Anyway. Yep. Uh, uh, but anyway, so um, uh, he, he said, you know, it, it's just, you know, it's almost non-existent there. I said, you know, I'm peeing like a racehorse. He says, yeah, because you don't have a prostate, basically. And I went, well, wait a minute. Phil had his just removed. Mine has just been allowed to dissipate slowly over three years. My cancer came back a year and a half later. Mm -hmm. And then I had seven weeks of five day a week uh, radiation. And that's, uh, you know, because they cut the urethra when they removed the prostate, that mm -hmm. wasn't easy. But the radiation, they didn't give me that uh, thing that you and Tony got. Uh, the Why did they cut the urethra? She was a great singer. Yeah, that's a <laughs> uh, so uh, they didn't give me that as when they did the radiation, they, you know, they just radiated around the area where the prostate would have been. And uh, I had uh, uh, issues with urination. I had to go all the time. Yeah. Well, you know, it, it's just starting to go normal. You yeah. know, but anyway, uh, uh, you know, of course, you probably have non-detectable PSA because you don't have a prostate. Right. You know. Right, I have uh, not uh, non-detectable. Yeah, but I st I still have my prostate. It's just you know they beat it up like a, yeah. So in our age group, not being ageist, but in our age group, sixty and above, four point five. Hold on a second. Get ready, Brian. Go ahead. Yep. It, yep. Four point five percent is and below is considered a normal range. It isn't a percent. It's four point five milligrams or something like that i don't know what it is. Oh, it's it's okay. a it's it's no it's a rating of basically a uh, a substance it's a specific antigen they find in yeah. The blood yeah yeah uh but you know i mean um uh, this is the most interesting talk in the world i don't think yeah let's get off prostates and fill yeah yeah so anyway so but i just wanted to let you know phil i'm you know yeah, I'm very happy that uh, I'm delighted. Now I don't have to go back for a year. Now I'm on a yearly thing, and I said well, I'll see you next year if I'm still alive. You know, I mean, you know, I hope you see me next year. You know, you'll outlive all of us. Have you been Probably. training Marjorie on how to continue the show after you're gone? Uh, <laughs> yeah, you, you pull the plug. <laughs> uh, no, nah, I don't think I'm going to. You know, I mean, uh, I, I, I've given enough lessons in my time to, to Jack Bishop to deal with, have to deal with that, you know. Uh, the fact is that uh, uh, Marjorie, well, Marjorie could learn how to do it, but it's no reason for her to do it, you know. 
So is Jack having a power outage too? He's not having a power outage. No, he's he's still got his. He didn't pay his bill. Uh, Marjorie used to help you with the TV show. Yeah, Um, she used to do that. uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I just, I, you know, I believe me, I'd probably be sick and tired of doing this before I die, uh, and we won't have to worry about that question. You know. Although Marjorie every now and then wants to have a big discussion with me about where everything is because just in case I go before she does or she goes before I do, we should know where everything is, you know, so. That happens a lot at our age. You know something, you're right, and uh, it probably should go on at every age for people because a lot of times people die, they die fairly young, and the wife is left not knowing where the bank accounts are, you know? Right. And what the passwords are to the, you know, this or that. And so everybody should probably have that talk with the person they love and live with, you know. Well, what I've, what I've done is I've created a draft message on my email. Mm-hmm. And that draft message has pertinent information like that. But it's in the draft folder. So the only way you can get to it is to be able to log into my email. Mm-hmm. And but, then you go to the draft folder, and you can open up that file. But your, and your wife knows what your email password is, right? Yes, Okay. she does. Okay. And so does my daughter, and so does my son. Of course, some of these email outfits go, you've got to change your password again. No. You know, and then so you, you got to tell your wife what the new password is. Uh, they, they, there's a company that has these three-ring binders, and what you do is you, you put in all your stuff keys uh to you know storage lockers uh instructions and so forth and you know i got it in the safe and this way if something happens they got the key to my storage room they you know they know where it is and if somebody uh, breaks into your place and breaks into your safe guess what they've got everything well good luck to yeah. them yeah uh 49 dollar safe you know yeah didn't you get it with your uh, body cam? Well, like for instance, Josh is uh, is is pr- pretty much, I guess, maybe the youngest one here tonight. Josh, you're married you, and you have a wife. Does she know where everything is in case, let's say, uh, you're coming home one day from work and the car crashes and you're gone? Uh, yeah, she has access to what she would need. So you've given her the talk about here's where everything is. This is what you need to know. You know, okay. I, I've given the talk to Faye, but I know it's going to happen. She's going to call a dumpster company. They're going to go outside, put a big dumpster, and everything's going to get pushed into it. And she's going to say, good riddance. riddance. And uh, yeah. somebody will find a bunch of good stuff, but yeah. uh, it'll, it'll be in the uh, in the trash heap of life. So, you know, I was in contact with today. You'll, you'll like this. Uh, um, let's see here. I guess Kevin will know this. And... Uh, and Brian will know this. I was in contact with Lori Thompson today. Uh, yes, yeah, so are you trying to get a hold of her? Yeah, yeah I was Facebook. trying to get a hold of her. Thank you very much for saying you didn't know. But uh, uh, <laughs> but you suggested I look at her on Facebook. But that I went to her Facebook page, and she hasn't gone to that in like 10 months or something <laughs> like that. So that wouldn't do me a lot of good. But finally, I said, hey, Matt, I got her phone number. And I don't <laughs> like to phone. So I, I sent her a text, and she texted me back. So. In a couple of weeks, we're going to get together and do a little thing so that we can uh, have I can interview her and see how That's she's awesome. doing. Yeah, I was doing that for you and Kevin. You know. And, and, and was Phil, she one of your producers? She was. My, she no. She was my sidekick. She oh. was my newswoman at uh, Live One Hundred and Five in San Francisco. Yeah, they've had a. I saw on the internet maybe like for maybe it was a few years back, but. Her and then some other people had some things on here. Chuck Farnham and them. They had some interviews and they talked about the the show back in the old old days. <laughs> but yeah, they talked about the show and stuff like that. And Lori was on there talking about some stories. And yeah, but nobody. I think I saw that, but nobody called me about it. I know. I figured that too. You I'm know. like, why didn't they even talk to you about it? Uh, yeah, I mean, why wouldn't you talk to me about it if yeah. you wanted to talk about the show? You know. Yeah. And whatever, what is what is what is what is Kevin doing? That's lighting up his beard like that. He's bleaching it. 
<laughs> it's blue light to get rid of COVID. It's uh, Trump sold it to him. That's two. By the way, do is, is COVID yeah. is COVID supposedly still a problem? I have no idea. May tenth. May tenth is gone. Like like Trump always said, one day it'll just disappear. Well, right. he may have so had he may have had the right idea. Just say there isn't there isn't a COVID, and then there isn't <laughs> one. Mm-hmm. You know. It's May 10th. God, where did all those millions of people go? I don't know. May 10th is because the other party won't approve more money. You know, you're going to have to pay for your or your insurance company, your COVID tests, <clears throat> vaccinations, excuse me, vaccinations and all that. It's not going to be free anymore because the other party won't authorize the money. I got to say something, I, and I'm 83, folks, so I can say it, okay? I have Medicare, all right? Anybody else here have Medicare? You have Medicare, Vernon. Phil, you have Medicare. Charlie has Medicare. Uh, is there anybody here who isn't on Medicare? Uh, anyway, uh, I, 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 we got, we, it's the first of the year. And all of a sudden I go to my doctor and they go, uh, we need $50 from you. And I suddenly remembered the first of the year, you have to do a deductible on Medicare. Now with me, it's like something like 120, 220 or 230, somewhere around in there. So uh, I got to pay that first amount of my Medicare. And somebody brought it up. Here you have Medicare. They take care of 80% of all your medical expenses, all right? Why is there a deductible of $200? I mean, isn't that somewhat niggling and nickel and diming? Why do they charge you income tax on your Social Security benefits? That's a defined benefit program. Well, well, they, they do, but if you don't make anything but that, I don't think you pay taxes as much. Don't you on get that. hit twice that way by, by paying yeah, taxes? Yeah, I get hit twice on my umpires because I have to pay Social Security. Uh, I have to pay taxes on any part of my Social mm. Security that equals what I make umpire. Really? Yeah. Well, anyway, I just never could figure out why Medicare says, hey, we want $200 out of you at the beginning of the year as a deductible. Why? Yeah. I've never where, did noticed that, where did that come from? Does does Kaiser charge that, Alan? Uh, a, a, I'm not a, on Medicare oh, yet. Oh, no. okay, yeah. Well, they have to. No, the, Kaiser does the Advantage plan. Yeah, so yeah. I don't think I don't think there's any deductibles. There's copays. And yeah, that, but, I have no deductible. Yeah. Oh, Charlie, you have Kaiser? <laughs> no, I I have Humana. Yeah, oh. man. What is an Advantage? Yeah, Humana yeah. Advantage, and they pay 100% of everything, no deductibles, no co-pays, yeah. no nothing. Yep. Yeah, but they, oh, they, you, you also have to pay a co-pay for services, right, that are rendered. No. I go see my doctors, whether it's a specialist or whatever, it's completely free. Well, no, but, you, 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 but you've, got, you've got that. You've got that. It's paid for. You've it's got not that. free. It's paid for. Yeah, but you've got. I mean, it's paid for. By the yeah, state. By the state. Is that due to the fact that you work for the state? And the state of Texas pays the other 20 Oh, okay. All right. All right. Hmm. But the Advantage plan, that's a different deal. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, we can get into all of that later on. Most people listening don't care because most, well, I don't know. How old do you think our audience really is? I think if there's anybody under 80, I'd be surprised. <laughs> but anyway. I'm under 80. You, I, I'm you under know. 80. I'm under 80. Oh, okay. I know you're all under 80. You're all a bunch of punk kids. I thought most of your audience was all committed to a mental institutions. Or, oh, no, that's just the people that post on your uh, uh, YouTube thing. Yeah. Well, you know, nobody tried to call tonight from our nutcases that try to call. And, oh, and yeah, he's here on the show. Them. Huh? <laughs> You've been hanging up on those poor people. Yeah. If you'd let them in. Maybe you'd have some more 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 callers. Thought you sent them over to Jack's show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, because well, he he can keep them off. Yeah, but anyway. Yeah, but well, he doesn't have video. They can't show penises. Right, but they don't know that. (laughs) Anyway, Josh, good talking to you, my friend. Always nice to have you here, because you there's always some question that comes up that you you're an expert on. Uh, Charlie, I hope you get your lights back on soon. Be a nice birthday present. Yeah, how cold is it, by the way? Oh, it's in the 50s now. Oh, really? Okay. 
Because right here... It's actually warmer out there than it is in my apartment. Right here, we are at balmy 11 degrees in New York City. Hmm. Uh, 48. Uh, your backup battery must be coming close to the end of its life, huh? Yeah. It's uh, uh, it three eight got here. Two, two yeah. out of four charges, yeah. yeah. That's the same thing you're getting, Alex. It's supposed to be delivered Ooh. tomorrow. Yeah, anyway, thank you so much, uh, uh, Alan, and thanks for the gift as well. Kevin, thank you. Thank you to uh, Brian Neary, to Vernon Nunn, and, of course, to the lovely and attractive music of Phil Meyer and his all-girl orchestra. Give yourself a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? There they go, folks. That's the citizen panel for tonight. Uh, they will reassemble uh, next week on Wednesday. Uh, meanwhile, uh, we will see you again on, well, let's see here, on Monday. Uh, with the pop-up show that we do that goes out on Facebook. And then we will be back again here, well, on uh, next, uh, oh, hey, yeah, of course, next, uh, next Wednesday, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, have a nice week, everybody. And if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Night, everybody. Bye. <laughs>